Welcome to our third monthly webinar of April, uh, the was sponsored by the Education and Training Committee of April. So today we are likely we have two, uh, one speakers and the moderator from both from Bangladesh. Uh, our moderator today is Dr. M.D. Akab. Uh, Dr. Akab is currently the Chief Medical Physics in the Evercare Hospital. Uh, Bangladesh. Uh, he's also the president of Bangladesh Medical Physics Association. Uh, Dr. Akada received his PhD degree in uh, uh, medical physics from uh, Maria Stokhandaska Curie National Research Institute on, in on College, uh, Wasa, Poland. He also trained as a post doctor. Uh, Doctor Research Fellow in the University of Western Australia. So Dr. Uh, Akad has many scientific publications and uh, <laughs> so now I would like to uh, pass the my uh, microphone to Dr. Akad to host a uh, module today's uh, webinar. Please, Dr. Akad. Thank you, Professor Dean. Uh, it was very nice to be here today. And good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, wherever you are. are. And I would like to welcome you all in the today's webinar. And today's webinar is going to be presented by Professor Dr. Hasin Anupam Adhari. She is born in Bangladesh, and she did her MBBS degree in 1997. Later on, she did her master's degree in medical physics in 2006 under the collaboration of German Academic Exchange Program. Later, she awarded PhD in medical physics in collaboration with the Organization of Women Scientists and Developing World, Internship Center for Theoretical Physics, Jingji Cancer Hospital, and the German Cancer Research Center in Germany. She has more than 70 publications, book chapters in different national and international journals and books. She's having the professional experience as a lecturer at the Gono University. Later on, she became the chairman of the medical physics and biomedical engineering department, and she served there about 12 years. Currently, she's working as a director for the Center of Biomedical Science and Engineering at the, at the United International University in Dhaka, Bangladesh. She is the founder president of Bangladesh Medical Physics Society and currently the advisory member of BMPS. She is the member of different national and international organizations, medical physics organizations like the AMPI, ICTP, ESTRO, APM, and so on. She has been awarding the Outstanding Medical Physics Award in 2020 from AFOM. She was the awardee of the International Day of Medical Physics from IOMP in 2018. She has been working as a program coordinator from 2015 to 2021. She is the member of many uh, international journals, like he is the editorial member of the International Journal of Radiation Research. He is the associate editor of Physica Medica European Journal of Medical Physics and many more. So now I would like to welcome Professor Dr. Hasin Urmu Azari to deliver his presentation. And she is going to talk about the medical physics contribution to the women's health and radiation safety. Please welcome Professor Hasin Anupama Ajhari. Thank you. Uh, am I audible? Yes, you are audible. Please yes. go ahead, okay. please. Okay. So please uh, stop your sh screen share. I will. Thank you to all and especially our home. We are doing uh, great with uh, help of our ETC chair, Dr. Jean Chiams. You know that's uh, 
I, I hope that was my previous uh, PowerPoint. So that time I was secretary, now I'm the vice president of AFOM. And uh, already after has given all of our, my credentials. So this is the thing which I would like to share with you about the women's health relation with radiations. That means I mainly focus on the pregnant woman's environment in our all arena of medical physics like radiation therapy, diagnostic and nuclear medicine. So when we uh, tell about the medical physics, we must not forget about Maria Stoppostoka Marie Curie. That's the very important thing. She is the first lady and first medical physicist who make this principle of physics in the field of medicine. And especially, he, she shows us by inventing a radiological car to help in medical wounded soldiers during the World War, First World War. So from here, we can see that the radiation are, are using in both diagnosis and treatment of disease. And that time, there were so many radiation accidents occurs. There was no radiation protection rules and many things. So here in these slides, in the following slides, you will see that's the, what kinds of happen we happened and what kinds of accident and how we can manage this accident. Okay. Oh, one slide is not moving. Okay. You see, that's the, this is simple thing. Everybody here is medical physicist. Everybody knows these things. So we are, what we are doing, we are doing in applied science. That means we are helping the cancer patients. We are diagnosing, we are uh, in a shielding class. So whatever we are doing in imaging sector, therapy sectors, as protection rules sectors. So we have to keep in mind that must we use the radiation in safely. This is an APM survey in the year of 2007. You see here that 76% of medical physics work in radiation therapy and 15% work in imaging physics and others very small criteria in different arena. So you see that we people working in a radiation environment as well as the people that means the coming to us for the treatment, they are also in radiation environment and also the people which we call the public. So medical exposure and public exposure. So everybody is getting exposure of radiation in these fields. So when we are doing this, we must see this that in many countries like us in Bangladesh also, this medical physics in Asian regions in many countries is not fully recognized. So in that case, but we know that ILO has already recognized this uh, medical physics professional in a classification of occupation in 2008 out of 22 health professionals. So we are here to bring up, and this AFOM is here to bring up this slogan to all the people, government and non-government, otherwise, the radiation will be misused and misdiagnosed as well. There are many hazards will occur, which we'll see year, year after years, not like Fukushima, Fukushima, like this accident. So we should be very careful on this. Thing. Now I must say that here, everyone who has joined in our family colleagues, everyone will every day going for X-ray, computer tomography, many things. And we also see in many research that uh, in computer tomography, the radio cancer is increased through the, from the radiation of CT. So there's uh, annually about 3,600 million under people undergo diagnostic radiology, 37 million people under nuclear medicine, and 7.5 million people are going treatment under radiotherapy. And what we are using, this is the ionizing radiations. So this is the main problem of our radiation hazards. So how it do, and now the advanced technology is coming and we are using also in interventional radiology is the now mandatory in Europe that the medical physicists must be there. 
So why these are thinking? Because when there is updated technology, we are using high energy ionizing radiations. And so they are a main focus. We have a breakdown of cell, mutation of the cell, and many things will be happen. And for this reason, what we are working so nice environment, so nice looking hospitals, but we should keep in mind that actually we are working in an environment, it must be optimized and justified area. So these are the challenges of our work. We do the creation of the new technology. We do the commissioning, dosimetry, treatment planning, patient care. So from the basic research of physics, we are coming to the applied physics. So everywhere that we must keep in mind that the safe use of radiation in medicine, either in diagnostic and therapeutic, this is our challenge. And the same time, we could, we are the people for the health professionals for the patient. So we need well-being of the patients as well as same time in parallel. We have to keep in mind that so we need to do use safe use of radiations. So here you see that in the you everybody knows this electromagnetic spectrum in the lower end of the spectrum it shows that the microwave radio wave actually there is no there's no harmless but when we see also in the sunlight it's started from the lower uh, uh, wavelength like wavelength from infrared then the higher wavelength to ultraviolet and beyond the ultraviolet we are working with this radiation, x-ray, and gamma rays. And we all know from the radiobiology that how it affects in the cell, in the direct effects and indirect effects. They can direct hit the DNA and break down and do, and other all otherwise also, they indirectly, they interact with the water and produce the free radicals, and which is very dangerous for our having the secondary carcinoma in the, sec in the long after. So why women? Why we, we are concerned with women? Because women actually the greater representation of the certain occupations, like technologists nuclear, in nuclear medicine or in radiation therapy, as well as radiologists everywhere. So we can have a higher risk of occupational exposure. So occupational exposure is a very, uh, term used by IAEA. So occupational exposure means what? That means we are working. We are working there. And we, which we are taking, that means there's a medical exposure, those who are coming here for the treatment. So why we are going for treatment, like breast carcinoma, gynecological carcinoma, or any osteoporosis, or any bone pain. So here we have to think how to make it a balance we have a good treatment, good diagnosis with radiation safety. And the same time we have seen that, that in childhood, females are more susceptible to a man because superficial and dormant breast tissue. Also when we consider in a reproductive years, so it can cause uh, inadvertent fetal radiations during pregnancy. And in reproductive age, we have to be more cautious if we do the go for undergo for radiation or not, because it can cause genetic damage to the eggs. Just a minute. So what normally, not women, everybody, especially women, we go to techniques when they're over 40 years of age, to have a screening for the breast carcinoma because this is the highest rate of carcinoma is involving in the worldwide breast carcinoma. So we go for mammography. It also uses the radiation, though it is a low dose X-ray, but we have to be careful because the people who are working there, they are not working with the only low dose radiation equipment. They also use the high dose radiation equipment also. And other side, on other side, we can see the CT scan. So in CT scan, you see that higher radiation exposure than Thank you. 
this. And uh, nowadays, the doctors already have now, when there is a radiation exposure, there will be increased cancer risk, there will be genetic mutation, and in case of pregnancy, fetal harm. But every time we have to keep in mind that which type of radiation we are using, what's the amount of the radiation dose, what is the duration of the exposure, as well as the age of the patients and health status of the individual. So this is the very important thing that durations, amount, type, age, and health in connection with the patient's status, how much, which, use, which, uh, which area we are actually in diagnostic or in therapy or in the medicine. So we have to think about this, that radiation exposure potential risk, this can be happen. Here you see that when there is a risk, there is a, you, I think you have heard all about the uh, UNSEER, the United Nations Scientific Committee and the effects of atomic radiations. They have assessing the, with data, with the population dose distributions, the risk assessment. And also we need to know how to make this when there is an assessment, there is a data, we have a result, then we should do the management so how we managed when they see there's an excessive bad effects then we have to reduce the unnecessary radiation exposure promoting the occupational radiation protection preventing the unintended exposure and addressing the health workforce moves in the field of medical use of radiation and lastly we have to make a common strategy and protocol which support the benefit risk obligations it is called as a weak communication. And all of this prevention of the radiation risk, there is a conceptual framework of radiation protection. Here you see on the left side, we always in the natural radiation from brick, from the soil, from the grounds, we are always all the humidity getting the natural radiation. But the next step is large part of population getting the medical applications and medical applications. And we are working here and large group of people also not so much, but it's nuclear power. And then small groups for the industrial research and space getting the radiation. So for this large part of population, which are in medical application for this, we have, they have done a radiation protection framework. So what do I say that UNSEER is depends to keeping the data and then international commission on radiological protection. They provide the philosophy and principles, how we can do this. And then international atomic energy agency, they make the BSS basic safety standards, legislation and regulation for all member states. Here you see all the our reports, annual safety glossary, NCRP, ICRP, all the peoples. And you will find is this is always all you, you can find whenever you work in any kind, any area, arena of medical physics, you will find these things in the website. And this is very important when you work in any area, please read it and you know which kind of work you are working and should know because now the intervention you see here, safety report series number 39 in, in a diagnostic radiology and intervention and procedure using X-ray. So now the, in the world is going to the interventional radiology. So the people who are working and medical physicists who are working here, they should know the safety uh, principles of this here. So here you see that IEA has done many things like you see the safety fundamentals. There are some safety fundamentals. They understand, they shows that radiation protection and the safety radiation source, there are some safety requirements. And then for ionizing radiations and other radiations, they have make some principal basic safety standards. Then now this guide come after that safety guidelines. That means for external beam therapy, that brachytherapy, for radionuclides, for the occupational. So everywhere they find done some guidelines. So here you you we, you you have you will find everything in IA website where you have all the guidelines here.
Now that you know that radiation principles, so radiation principles, the three things that we all know, that's the time, distance, and shielding. So this is the principle when there is a less time, then less radiations, greater distance from the source, the less radiations, and shielding behind shielding from the source, less radiations. And besides this, for the radiation workers, also we need some uh, late aprons, late glass, and many things you see here in the uh, pictures, they must be used. So the one thing is that the what is the actually the principles, what we everybody know here, Alara, because as low as reasonable achievable. So we have to know that must appropriate radiation protection to minimize their exposure. And when we do these things, we must inform the patient also about the risk and benefits so that they also understand their safety measures and they can they can do afterwards when they will come later for the successive radiation in any treatment. They, they know the risk and benefits. So another is, is justification. So justification, you see, that's the, it's a net benefit. When we see, we, we would like to give a proper balance, keep a proper balance between the detrimental and about the our benefits. So there should be a proper balance in a diagnosis in medicine or in a specific procedure or individual patient before the examinations. Another is optimizations. That means it comes from an imaging procedure. Which procedure will be accurate for that patient? So Minim, we have to minimize the detrimental effect. And what is our role? We should calibrate the equipment in, in a protocol we should have in our logbook. And also image quality should be optimized. And another is dose limits. Dose limits is depends on page, patient's age, conditions, and also the procedure. And it is must be ensured that radiation exposure in a set levels. This is the NCRP and ICRP values. You see, we know the deterministic and uh, stochastic effects. So stochastic effects, effective dose, um, there's a cumulative, you know, so that's the NCRP 10 millisievert per age. And in case of ICRP, in uh, over five years, 20 millisievert per year average. In annually, when we do the same things, 50 millisievert per year, and the same as NCRP and ICRP. When we think that within the deterministic effects, that means when you by those the specific organs, lengths of the eyes, skin, hands, feet, there's a special value which is guided by the NCRP and ICRP. And also you see here embryo or fetus exposure, effective dose after pregnancy when it is declared she is pregnant that only 0 0.5 millisievert per month. And in case of ICRP, we said one millisievert to abdominal surface. So why we are so much concerned that pregnancy need a uh, special radiation protections for the occupational exposure? Because there are many types of exposure that must be done because for any radiological examination on nuclear medicine or in cardiac catheterizations or sometimes it's accidental exposure some, when we are working as an occupational exposure. And sometimes nobody knows that the women in, is, uh, is in reproductive age, but goes under radiations. So wherever we do, so now you, you know that, that uh, every week, many number of people, females are getting radiations and sometimes they do not know they are pregnant. And these are the ionizing radiation. Each year, thousands of pregnant women are exposing. So this exposure sometimes affect the unborn child. So what are the guidelines? So guidelines is we must inform. So we in the occupation, when we are in occupation, we should inform the employer that the pregnancy is there and how to make the reducing 
time spent in the radiation area environment and wearing the protective equipment. Here you see when a me uh, medical exposure in a pregnant woman has been done, you see that so from the two to 25 weeks, you see two to three weeks, they're all over. You, uh, every week there's some problems. In two to three weeks, there is a severe abnormalities in the child bronch. In four to 11 to weeks, also there are abnormalities. 11 to 16 weeks, there are abnormalities in eyes, skeletal, small head, also mental retardations. 25 weeks, the central nervous system is very sensitive to the radiations, structural abnormalities, and as well because the already organogenesis has been done. So here, when we did the fetal dose in the range of the one way, severe mental retardations occurs in the children during the eight to 15 and to a lesser extent in 16 to 25 weeks. And two weeks till term, if we give the uh, radiation, it goes do the growth retardations. So, Normally, the childhood cancer also occur if the fetus exposed to 200 to 250 millisievert. So there are every steps of gestational period, the uh, and women got many kinds of problems in her child, birth child. So we have to keep aware of these things and we have to be very cautious when use radiations. In a pregnant population, this is the percentage. Normally, in a now, it shows that spontaneous abortion occur more than 50% for the radiations, genetic abnormality 4 to 10%, growth retardation 4%, and measurement 2 to 4%. When there is a, when we will see that, so we say that's when we do the termination of pregnancy, when, in which type, uh, those of the radiations. When there is a less than 100 milligram, it is not, not justified. Uh, it's based on the radiation rates. When there is 100 to 500 milligram, there can be a fetal damage, but its decision should be based upon individual circumstances. It depends on the dose and stage of the pregnancy. When there is a late pregnancy, that means when high fetal dose, 100 to 1000 milligram, Normally, there is no malformation or birth defects occurs. So for the emergency exposure, sometimes will be needed. So the saving and equivalent saving dose is 0.5 millisievert to a large portion of the body. In this graph, you will see that the, up to 12 weeks, that means in first trimester, this is the most risky person, and then second trimester is less weak, and the third and the last trimester is the least risk. So up to 12 weeks, you see all the prenatal rate, congenital abnormalities, neonatal deaths, and also the blood cancer, leukemia is it. And when the advancing the later uh, stage of the pregnancy, the radiation risk is uh, decreasing. So we have understand on these things that the pregnancy is a very, very special condition. We need to extra care to protect fetus from the harmful radiation exposure. And for this reason, the occupational exposure of the people can must wear a monitor. It can be a passive or it can be active. And passive monitor, usually the dose reading has to be monitored at the end of the day or month. But active monitor is very good than the passive monitor. It is real time. And if the limit is their alarm is there is a problem. So they can 
So in, in three areas while you are working now, therapy, diagnostic, and nuclear medicine. So what the dose of the these pregnant women? You see when we are in uh, radio, uh, sorry, teletherapy and brachytherapy, when we are in mother, then much higher fetal dose come from teletherapy than brachytherapy. And of course, we have to think where we are giving the radiations. If it is within the treatment volume, that means in the, if the embryo, where we would like to give the radiation. So here the prescribed dose is very important. We know the dose is a function of the prescribed dose and distance from the age and center of the treatment field of the embryo or fetus. And we must keep in mind that two types from two components we are getting those. One is patient's internal scatter as well as leakage scatter and treatment unit scatter. So we have to think that this all those is going to that embryo when we are giving the embryo site radiations. When also the near the uh, abdominal uh, area, like in breast, if we would like to give the radiations. So in early pregnancy, is a uh, you see here in early pregnancy, like approximately the distance must be 40 centimeter from the treatment field center in late pregnancy, 10 centimeter. And here you see that. And when do the brachytherapy? Brachytherapy is very, you, we have temporary implants as well as permanent implants. So it must be given that the dose rate should not exceed. Several depends on the which kind of radio we are producing and what is in And also in permanent implant, you see that stuff when the patient release normally after several days of implant. So radiation safety officer must give a very good instruction that that they should should not do any breastfeeding when. The two for there are many publications you have seen here in this table. You see that the initial site is not in the abdominal, in pelvic flank, abdominal pelvic, but there are many advanced pregnancy occurs like low birth weight, small gestational age, miscarriage, preterm delivery, threatened abortions. So many things is happening. So you see that uh, when uh, whatever we do or not do, but we must hear that the radiation risk is very important. Now is the diagnostic case. Actually, when it's a very uh, kilovolt range, so if when it is extra abdominal, sometimes there is no significant contribution. But we usually extra abdominal when we uh, mainly when we do the CT. So normally the radiation dose should be 0 0.1 millisievert. And external radiation sources always do not affect any breastfeeding or milk production. On the right side, you see the uterus estimated dose in typical values. It is already in the chart. You all have in your uh, in your tables and everywhere that you can see for the chart. Here we see interesting that you there are several areas by me day when there is an X-ray examination. We see that intravenous urogram and lumbar spines pelvis has a more maximum about 10 milligray occurs. And in the right side you see barium enema is about 24 milligray. So we have to be very cautious when we do these examinations of a pregnant mother, then we have to cautious what happened when we do the head chest CT or abdominal CT, we have those three offer actions. Now you see this chart, when we do the fluoroscopy, we know everyone that when the exit tube is behind the table, you see here, then when the radiations is uh, more or less, but 
The dose rate without late acron here is less, but dose rate behind the late acron is more, about 20 millisievert. But when, when the, uh, the radiation tube is above the table, then you see here dose rate without late acron is about 15, but behind the late acron is opposite. So we have to keep in mind that the occupational exposures uh, getting the radiations, how much and how long. So the monitor is very, very important that when we do this kind of treatment going to production benefit, but we should think also ourselves that how to make radiation safety. So when we do pregnancy in catheterizations, we abdomen need to be wrapped from diagram diaphragm to symphysis pubis. If more than 12 weeks, so it must be done normally in cardiac catheterization more than 12 weeks. Otherwise, the organ development will hamper. If in volume of fetus is very small at so the fourth month, then the fetus and chest distance must be maintained. And normally dose is given only two millisievert. Now come in the nuclear medicine. In nuclear medicine, you know that the, what we are the radiopharmaceutical use will all cross the placental barrier. So diagnostic, when we do the nuclear medicine diagnostic purpose, other than radio iodines, it will be 10 millisievert. Here you see the charts, that's the 131 iodine in thyroid case, in whole body. How much is the less than eight to nine weeks? Normally thyroid is not functional, so it will not help uh, harmful, but three to, from three to four months and six to nine months, there is specific millisievert has to be given to the mother. And again, in the whole body, so less than three months is the 27 microsievert and three to nine months, less than 55 microsievert is given to the conceptuals. Also, these nadionuclides are excreted in breast milk. So breastfeeding is suspended when they undergo this therapy. Even completely suspended when it is uh, tricked by the IG-131 and they can start breastfeeding three weeks after IG-125, gallium-67, natrium, and thallium-201. And after four hours when treated with the technetium-99 metastable, then after four hours, they can have a breastfeed. So more mainly short, uh, when the, for the pregnant patient, Shortly, radionuclides are used that do not cause any large fetal dose and all hydration and encouraging voiding of urine. So here you see the some basic principle that you know that's when we do this uh, radioactive particles we used in nuclear medicine. Sometimes it is fallout. Sometimes it is inhaled through the lungs or it is contaminated with food and water. So, so there are many protocols uh, uh, that you must see under a roof where there is less radiation. Maybe you can stand behind a column or around a corner or behind the table so we can have radiation. Also, in and another thing is that the preconception when for uh, there is no pregnancy for any, any other parents, man or women, do not have any effects from the radiation from gonads. And also the productive age, you must see that the, we have to know which kind of treatment method we'll use other than the radiations like ultrasonogram or MRI like this. And diagnostic, investigation dose can be considered, but only cancer induction probability. And we should know the confirmation of the last menstrual period.
and the young workers should when there are many young workers working in our uh, various fields of medical physicists so then that case we must remember no person under 16 will be subjected to the occupational exposure under 18 they can allow work but only in controlled area for training purposes and very close supervision it's very important no person should be work in as a occupational exposure so what is our role when the, when an employer is pregnant employee to when is pregnant you have to tell your employer in written form that you are pregnant an administrative superior or head of their unit will make certain uh, declaration file has been open and fetus is treated like a member of general population and what is the employer duties they have to make the in women's environment for risk assessment a full explanation has to be done with the radiation safety officer and whole management team what will be the potential risk of fetal radiation exposure what their policies and those limits and review should be done to reduce her exposure there there should not be no research on pregnant patients will be discouraged if pregnancy cannot be excluded in that case special attention should be given with proper justification particularly in urgency so what proper shielding dose monitoring alternative image modalities and radiologists must know what's the background on why they are doing with proper rationality is very important for the imaging of the female patients you know in 1978 in pregnancy discrimination act was passed that times that a policy has been issued that bans the pregnant women from working in their radiation facilities but now that time some women were uh, staying away where where the environment is acceptable but now the iea discourage this discrimination instead the agency encourage hospitals to allow an expectant woman to continue working in her regular setting provided the fetus is not exposed to more than 1 millisievert during gestation and this woman should only continue to work in a radiation setting of her own volition not because an employer mandates it so we should know this so because there are many women medical physicists are working here and also many technologists we have a team and many pe women people females are working we are getting also female patients children patients as well as reproductive age patients so we have to cautious from our side and also we can cautious and if they bring any mistake we make them understand so what things should be better for them so now the ncrp recommends that occupational radiation fetal dose limit 5 millisievert during entire pregnancy but with a daily limit 0.025 millisievert and less than 0.5 millisievert per month and on the other hand icrp recommends less than 1 millisievert in total during entire pregnancy and when there is a surface of the women's abdomen that means in lower trunk for the remainder of pregnancy they can get 2 millisievert and when there is a declaration of the pregnancy the fetal dose never exceeded 1 millisievert during the remainder of pregnancy in general these limits are achievable with proper precaution in place of fetal dose limit these are the references and thank you
and thank you madam for your nice presentation uh, so far we have a few questions and the first questions from uh, devulinda mukherjee uh, she's asking the still women medical physicists are discriminated at workplace especially married women ones and in many private hospital due to odd working hours late nights so they are not getting jobs what is your opinion in this regard uh thank you i think uh, i say that in my uh, uh presentations that in many areas i think that uh, many countries still not medical physicists are not well not recognized and well not understood so it's our duty because we have a radiation safety officers in every hospitals and uh, i think india also done the radiation safety course so we have to make understand the administration and things that we have to do this otherwise it will be very difficult that when uh, when uh, the uh, especially during pregnant or when they have a because i show one slide that there is one thing we need that no sometimes we do not know we are pregnant but we are in the radiation field so this when we know that we are pregnant so we yeah. have to get in this way that community dose not should exceed the icrp or ncrp value uh, okay uh, she is also asking the same for the doctors who are working for the interventional radiology they are also facing the same problem due to the odd duty hours Could we have to comment take... on that actually uh, we have to take more medical physicists that admission should understand because in corporate uh, structures uh, the thing is that uh, we are take, uh, we are keeping less med medical physicists but having more duty so there if there is a shifting duties and they understand this i think it can be because interventional radiology is a very important things and there is also high to, more radiation you can get so you have to we have to understand when we will be more in radiation area so we have a more cumulative dose and i think everybody use in bangladesh we do not uh, some some area we use the monitor but everybody should use monitor uh, so that they can calculate the dose at the end of the month or and these things for the pregnant woman i am telling this otherwise we have a TLD everywhere is using and we know how much dose we are getting it is also the way we can know understand that whether we will do the more work or less work okay thank you madam so the no next question is if ct suggested examination for the female especially for the age of 15 to 16 years does it account in any way for any reproductive abnormality in future sorry i have to see the question okay i can see uh, the question is if somebody has to go for the ct examination at the age of 15 to 16 years so in any way does it sounds any reproductive abnormality in future it depends better to avoid in a 16 years or 15 years better to avoid i say but there is other uh, non ionizing radiation you can do it if the doctor said it must do but with, but you know that's the is you done in one yeah, only one time here one day but if it is cumulative many times you are doing you have to must make a uh, note that how many times she is undergone these things so and how much dose she is receiving this is also important because when we well, the general people go to the doctor and say to that for city examinations so those is a one type of matter so better to avoid in 16 15 16 age to have the city examination otherwise obligatory okay so the next questions from k m masudrana what is the criteria for the ems quality optimization in aspect of the radiation safety to the patient group image quality optimization you have to uh is a uh, 
you know that's uh, you uh, you best quality pictures with minimum radiation. This is the optimization in the radiation safety needs. So best quality pictures when you think that's you first decide that's the first doctor's radiologist decide which kind of area he will go. And the thing is minimum radiation and with best quality. So this is a, the optimization should be done in a such a way that uh, those must reduced but with best quality in here sometimes we see we know that when you give more radiation dose you have a good pictures okay thank you but uh, when you give the less dose you will not get the good but hello okay. Yeah. So the next question is uh, during the COVID times, many pregnant women may have undergone CT imaging and etc. So do you have any data on radiation doses received on uh, two photos? I mean, Dibula uh, Namukhaji again asking for some reference or reference materials. Is there any data available that the patient, um, then the patient, the COVID patient who has undergone the CT imaging and who has any, you know, significant uh, information about the fetus or not so yes i, I have shown some uh, publications but you will find more many publications and already in some uh, research has done in america usa uh, that's the when you undergone the ct uh, examinations during pregnant there is some man informations and man formation of organogenesis i think you will find also in you or you you think then i will send you in your email Okay, so another question is the Ayat uh, M. Uh, Sadeldin. Uh, so I don't know, he's, she's asking, so do you prefer avoiding pregnant women to work through it as a nurse or the other workers? I mean, uh, the question is not clear, but what I understand here, this, are you preferring that the pregnant woman should not go under any uh, examination that requires ionizing radiation? No, you see that now I'm last slide, I have shown you that I do not discriminate now because if you have wear the monitors, active or passive monitors, so you can understand how much dose you're getting. So it's not a, I think this is not a harmful. So we should not fear on it. This is harm, uh, uh, we, we, this is must be monitored. If you get excessive dose, you should away from that area, but you will work another area where there is no radiation dose. But we should not fear about that one. Okay. So the next question is uh, Yasika Chopal. Is MRI preferred for pregnant women? Why and why not? I don't think so. That's the pregnant woman is MRI is very much needed. Yeah. Whether actually the ultrasound is effective tools for the pregnant woman. If there is any problems in soft tissues or fractures and like things, but it will not affect until when you will deliver, you can do this thing. So MRI is not so much needed there. Okay. So another uh, it's important question, I think, from uh, Mushin uh, Punjakande. So most of the time we uh, evaluate our TLD in every three months. So what do you prefer? It is one month for the pregnant woman. Is that okay or still three months is fine? I think uh, monthly is very good because uh, for pregnant women, uh, better than three months monthly, it will be better monitor. Or if you do use the active monitor, so when the dose exit per day, then you will have a um, alarm will be there. So you will get to know that's what you should be avert that environment. Okay, so another question is, is there any uh, particular dosimeter you prefer for the pregnant woman? Uh, no, I, no, I, no, I can't say that because uh, um, the, the atomic energy agency actually which give you on all, all the hospitals, I think this is enough. 
but uh, there are some uh, alarming dosimeter you must wear of the pregnant woman, I think so. But what we are using, that is not an alarming. So if there is any alarm uh, used in the dosimeter, that will be more preferable. Okay, so another question is, this is related to the linear accelerator. The pregnant woman can go inside of the plan implementation, I mean, inside of the linear room or not? Yes, of course, you can do everything. But you have to monitor your dose, whether it is higher than what's the recommended dose of ICRT or NSRP protocols. Yeah, so that's the last question. I think we got a very fruitful information from you regarding the safety for the women, especially for the pregnant women. And definitely the message, uh, you know, is decimated 